Brother Lee, would you ask uh, God's message, brother, over the service, uh, message, my friend? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, Lord, for allowing us to be here. We thank you for keeping us safe this week. For God, we thank you for this wonderful word that you're getting ready to give us through the pastor. Heavenly Father, we pray that you anoint him to speak plainly and clearly. We pray that as a congregation we can receive it and grow from it and use it to uh, help somebody else, Heavenly Father, that might need it. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We ask him to forgive us for our sins and be our God always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated in the presence of the Lord, Brother Brown. I appreciate you leading us in worship this morning, brothers. I appreciate everybody being in God's house. Amen. Uh, this this morning, I'm always glad to see everyone uh, here. Uh, I'm going to take a text from 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, turn over there uh, with us there to uh, 1 Corinthians uh and chapter chapter 2 there praise the Lord the uh, Bible says this in verse uh, actually verse uh, verse 1 through 5 it says uh, and I brethren when I came to you came not with excellency of speech of, uh, or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of our God well, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. In the power of God. Praise the Lord. Paul said here uh, in this verse number three, he said, uh, he said this. He said, I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. Uh -huh. He said, I was with you in weakness and in fear. And I've heard people say, well, I... You know, I thought that you're not supposed to fear. Brother, I thought Christians wasn't was supposed to fear. And I say to that, I say amen. Amen. Uh, you're right. Uh, uh, you're, as a Christian, you're not, you're not supposed to be afraid. You're not supposed to fear. Amen. Bible says in Luke chapter 12 and verse 5, it says, uh, uh, and Jesus said, Jesus said this, I'll show you who you should fear. He says, fear him, fear him, which after he had killed, had power to cast into hell. Yes, I say it unto you, he said, fear him. Amen. That's, that's who you're supposed to fear. That's, that's the only fear that a child of God is supposed to have. Somebody say amen. Uh, is, that, is that fear of God? So for all of the I don't fear God folks, I'm not afraid of God folks. Amen. I, guys, I think that's the problem. I think that's the problem today. Why, you know, that that uh, I, have, I have no fear of God, that type mentality, uh, I, think that, I think that's the problem today of why that people are so easily uh, okay and smooth with handing over the reins of their church to a government telling them, well, you can have service or you can't have service. You know, you, you, can, you can do, you know, they, they're just that, just that I don't fear God mentality and uh you know guys look most most are more afraid of losing their precious life than they are of making any kind of significant advances for the kingdom of god they're more afraid of that they're the more afraid of of losing they fear losing oh they don't fear god um, 
I, I grant you that. They don't have a fear of God, you, you know. Uh, and uh, they're, they're, they're more afraid of, well, you know, if I don't comply with what, they, with, 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 with what the government says is the limit of my rights uh, as far as worship and preaching and all that kind of, kind of stuff, then I, I'm afraid they're going to come up in here and, 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 and take me out of church. You know, we, we've all seen those videos of people not wearing masks, you know, different places, and, and the police would come in and handcuff them and, and, uh, and, and you know, uh, uh, rough them up a little bit and, and put them in a squad car and take them off somewhere else, you know. We, we've all seen, oh, so, so they're more afraid of that type stuff, you know. Amen. More, more afraid of losing their precious life. They're more scared of a virus than... Uh, they are of not doing the will of God. Amen? They're more scared of someone thinking that they are for Donald Trump or something like that than, than, uh, than, than actually uh, for being supporters of the Word of God. And we tell, I tell people all the time, look, it's not about me liking Donald Trump or not liking Donald Trump. Amen? It's, it's, it's that I am a supporter of the Word of God. And if Trump is on the bandwagon, then Trump is on the bandwagon, right? But uh, you know, we, we already see what's coming down the what's coming down the, the road now. You know, coming up. Amen. And I, I'm I'm telling you guys, I, I'm I'm dreading it, amen. But I, but that, that's just that's just how it goes, amen. And but they're more scared of people thinking things like that they are legalistic than they are for actually obeying God. They don't want to be called, oh, they'll call me legalistic if I obey God to the letter. I, you know, I, I don't need to be caught obeying God to the letter of the law because that killeth, you know. And, and, but see, that's just an opinion of, uh, you know, an opinion uh, what man put? Oh, he's obeying. He's he's obeying to the letter of the law. So that means he's in legalism. And I, I've said this before, and I said a million times, uh, legalism is 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 not obeying God to the letter of the law. Legalism is a lost man's problem, not a saved man's problem. I've I've said that a million times. I said a million more times. God, look. God expects His children to obey Him. It's not legalism. Legalism is the same thing as what the atheists say when they say uh, morality without God. Now that is legalism. When they start talking, oh, I can be moral and I don't have to have no God or, or no God to tell, that's legalism. Morality without God. So, what Jesus said, fear God. What I'm preaching here is fear God. Amen? And uh, I, I, I think that's what Paul was saying here when, when he said, uh, made, made the statement about him being uh, in fear and trembling. Amen? I think that's what Paul was saying there. Somebody say, say amen here this morning. He said, uh, he said I, 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 came, I came to you I came to you fearing God and I was trembling. I came to you fearing God and I was trembling. Amen. Have, guys, have, have you ever have, have you ever uh, 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 trembled in fear? Have you ever been that afraid? You know, I, I'm gonna tell you, I have. I've been scared like that a few times. I've, I've, I've been in fear and trembling, and you, you know, every time I get up to preach. Every time I get up to preach, you know, uh, you know, I, I I tremble, I tremble, Amen. And and uh, uh, you know, so when you are in fear and trembling, you move with purpose, Amen. Uh, you move with wisdom, you move with caution. You know, you're kind of a little bit more alert about what's going on, Amen. Because because. Uh, you know, I'm speaking on the behalf of God. 
to a room full of people. To people that might hear it on social media later or something like, you know, I'm, I'm speaking on the behalf of God. You know, have, have you ever really thought about that? Speaking on the behalf of God? Have, have, you, have you ever really thought about that? Amen. That, you know, that, guys, that's why I don't, I don't like getting up here and going off the cuff. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, fly by the seat of my, my pants type preacher, you know, uh, type uh, preaching, no notes, no prayer, no nothing, just stand up here and, and, and just speak. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have any thoughts or, or, or anything in, in, in my spirit, you know, just stand up here and, 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 and preach. Guys, that's, that's also why the, I don't fly too far outside of the Scripture either. Amen? Well, brother, do you, do you believe in the rapture? What about a pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath? Pre-wrath. Are you, are you, do you believe in pre-wrath, brother? Pre-millennial, amillennial, post-millennial. Um, okay. It's just this simple. Are you ready? He's coming again. We need to be ready, and it could get bad. How about that? Amen. And, you know, it's just, it's just that simple. And, and, you know, that's what I know. You know, you can throw all these other words in and all, all this kind of stuff. Guys, it's just that simple. You know, I, guys, I got to stick with what I know. I got to stick with what I know. And that's why that I always say things like the Bible says. The Bible says. Jesus said. The Bible says. Amen. So we got to move cautiously and trembling. Amen. Cautiously and trembling, and and uh, that that's why that's why I hack over my sermons and go back through my sermons and and look back through my sermons. Amen. Lord, is this truth, or is this just my perspective of things? Is, is this is is this the the cultural perspective of things? You know, uh, it, or is is this Bible? Is this Bible right? Is 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 this what you want said to your people? Or do I need to do I need to X this out and say something else? You know, God, this is a hard preach here. This is a hard message, a hard pill to swallow from the gospel. Amen. So uh, how do we build them back up? Amen, somebody. How, how, how do we encourage them after this hard preach? So in fear and trembling, amen. You know, not not literally, but it's more like. Uh, God, I hope you move. Please move. You got to move. You got to do something here. You got to give me the anointing here to preach. You got to give me some ump along the way or something like that. Amen. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just going to stay consistent to what your word says. That's what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to preach it however it falls. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to stay consistent to what the, the word says. That was Paul's power when he preached. Amen. I said that was Paul's power right there. Amen. If, if, if you want spiritual power, then humble yourself. Humble yourself and say, God, I'm dependent upon you. Humble yourself and say, God, I need you. Amen. Guys, look, when we start looking at our abilities, may God help us. May God help us. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because... I understand this. I understand there's giftings in people. And I understand there is ability in people. And uh, when, you, when, when you start to rest in that, though, you start to rest in that, you start to lose the power of the Holy Ghost of God in your life. Amen. Don't, Pastor, what do you say? I'm saying don't, don't rest in, in your ability. I mean, you got it. I understand that. But anointing does not come from your ability. Amen? The anointing of God does not come from your... Show, show me one Bible verse. One Bible verse where God says, Oh boy, you've got a lot of ability there. You've got, you got so much ability, so I'm going to anoint you because you've got the ability. No, guys, that's not the way it works. Amen? Your, your ability is a gift from God. 
You got it. Amen. But the anointing comes from a life that you live unto the Lord. Amen. That fear of God that you've got. That obedience unto the Lord that you've got. That, that, that surrendering that you have to His will. Somebody say amen this morning. Your weakness is what I'm talking about. Your weakness in yourself and your strength in God that says, God, you have to move here. You've got to do something along the way here. Amen? That, that anointing. Amen? The anointing means that a person is filled with God's Spirit. Amen? It means that they're filled with God's Spirit. Amen? And, and, uh, and that God has anointed them for a task. I've called you to preach. I've called you to do this or that. Whatever. Amen. And let me tell you, I do rest in that, though. Amen. I said, I do rest in... You know, every time I go out to preach, man, I'm, I'm just as nervous. You know, if I preach somewhere in the marketplace, you know, and, you know I'm, I'm just... I'm, I'm going to be up... They could tell you. You know, I, I mean, I'm pacing back and forth and flipping through scriptures. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm just, <clears throat> you know, I just, you, you know, I'm, I'm in fear and trepidation, you know, because I, I know that the people that we're talking to, preaching to, brother, are lost. Amen. And so, God's like, I've called you to do this. Amen. And man, let me tell you, if it had not, if, if it had not been for, for this fact, you know, that God, you have called me to do this. You've anointed me to preach to the church with love and boldness. Come on, somebody. A amen. And, and you've anointed me to do that. You've anointed me to do that. God, you did this, not me. Amen. God, this is this is your church. It's not my church. Amen. This is this is your pulpit, not mine. This is not my pulpit. You know, I'm I'm just standing behind it. God's allowing me to preach. You've called us here, and let me tell you, I'm telling you, man, there's a tremendous comfort in that and knowing that such a time as this that God has put us in. God has let us through all these many different uh, administrations and presidencies and di different ones, you know, we've seen them up and go and down and all, all this, you know, and, and I'm going to be honest with you, God, God bless us with, with uh, actually four more years of being able to, to do things, you, you know, and, and not have to worry about going to jail for our preaching or, or whatever, getting in trouble, getting fined, you know, the church has... Had a lot of liberties, amen, and and so, uh, uh, but it, all that is, is about to come to a screeching halt, amen, in a very bad way, amen. But uh, you know, I've got this, I've got this uh, comfort, amen, in the fact that God has called us for time in this, a time of this that He put us. He put us here. He put us all together here, even as a church. Amen. Not not to uh, not to uh, just come to church and have church as usual. Amen. But to preach His word in this last day to take a stand. You know, e guys. Even if need be, going to jail for the preaching of the word of God. And trust me, that's coming. You know, I've, I've got a lot of friends that stand out in front of abortion clinics and preach. Those days are, are number, not numbered. I'm telling you, those days are numbered. Amen. But for such a time as this, God has called us. Amen. Right here in this, in this place, Jackson, Tennessee. Amen. And, and uh, uh, you, you know, for knowing that God, you you called you've called us to speak the truth, Amen. To speak the truth, Amen. Just you know, just open my mouth and 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 in, in humility and meekness, let the Spirit of God move, Amen. Let the Spirit of truth out, 
Let it fall how it falls. Amen? Not, you know, no, no gimmicks and all this kind of stuff. Just, just simply just humbling yourself and just preaching, obeying God. Amen? Obeying the Lord. So, Lord God, right now, Lord, I just pray for the power of our church, Lord. Oh, God, that we can stand uh, here, oh, God, together in this, in this time, oh, God, in the next few months. Uh, Lord, I wish I could say it was going to be a, uh, be a grandiose revival and just a wonderful revival movement. Maybe it will, but probably won't, but maybe it will. But, oh, oh Lord, I, I, just, I just pray that we can all at least stand not, to, not affected and try, trying, to, trying to make peace with the world, but that, that we have made peace with God and that we are, we are uh, 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 preachers of righteousness, preachers of, of God's Word, proclaiming the truth of God's Word. And so, Lord, I just give you the glory. I just give you the honor, Lord, right now, and I just pray... Lord, for the boldness, for the, uh, not just the a, a boldness, but the umph, oh God, to, to take up the cross, Lord, and take it out there to the streets, on the corners and highways and hedges, like you said to do. Not just talk about it, but oh God, do it. I, I give you the, the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord, right now. Anoint your church, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, just give us that mentality, I pray. Precious name of Jesus. Now, I, just, I just thank you, Lord. Just give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Right now, and I call it done. Lord God, if there's anyone here, uh, oh Lord, that's, uh, that's sick in their body, the Bible says that you sent your word and healed them all. So Lord God, I'm just praying forth the word of God. Sending forth the word of God right now that by whose stripes you were healed. And we're all in agreement, Father God, if, if anyone is sick in this building, oh God, or family is sick in this building, just touch them, Lord, right now for, for your glory, for your honor, for your praise only, Lord, that you'll be lifted up. So, Lord God, I, I just give you all the praise and the glory, Father, just touch them physically. Heal their body from the top of the head to the sole of their feet. I pray in Jesus' name. Oh God, if anyone is going through anything, Lord, uh, here this morning, I, I just thank you for victory in their life. I thank you, Father God, for touching their life. I thank you, Father God, for, for the ability to call upon your name and that we can stand with each other. So Lord God, I, I just give you all the credit, all, all the praise. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Brother Bobby, do you want to close this out, my friend? And, and uh, praise the Lord. Appreciate it. Yeah, we got time. It's relatively a um, short er, versions of my message. But come on, bro. Yeah, he stuck in the back back there, didn't he?